Focus. Focus, focus. Okay, you should focus on this. I mean, it's gonna be a tough. This will be a tough show for you, I think. Are we on already? We're on. It's live. <laughs> I am focused. All right. Well, just you know. <laughs> you focus. I am focused. I'm always focused. <laughs> Why do you think I don't focus? Remember the cameras over there. <clears throat> I know. Are you sure you're ready to talk about this movie? I am ready. Sure. Well, greetings, imagination connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, your master of fun and wonder, your vice for a verisimilitude, but most importantly, your sommelier of cinema. And I am here with my compatriot, who uh, has her phone going on, but apparently turning <laughs> it, was it our off. Stream. Oh, it was our stream. Yeah. Don't cross I was, our I was stream. Chatting in the... You were crossing the streams. I was crossing the streams. Well, who might you be? I'm Elizabeth Gwendolyn Bell. And what is this? I This is Whining About Movies, Elizabeth Hughes. And who are you? I am the ace, the and arbiter what? of cinematic excellence. And what else are you? <laughs> the enchantress of entertainment. The encha and didn't someone hang another name on you? They did? Yeah, remember? Oh, I forgot. We'll have to figure that out. Somebody will remind us. Yes, please remind me. I, I like the names, so... Someone's always names. there to remind you. Only nice names, though, please. Tonight's <laughs> kind of fun. Uh, tonight, first of all, Claude <clears throat> and Candida sent us uh, yes, uh, a, a, a bunch of wines, but you chose this one tonight. Refreshing. It's a little warm out today. Yes. Uh, Noble Vines, uh, 242 Sauvignon. Oh, hang on. <laughs> if we're going to talk about this, I need to switch the camera so you can actually see the wine. So this is from Claude and Candida. We want to thank you for that. Uh, it's a Sauvignon Blanc. And it has, as you pointed out, the highest alcohol content of the wine they sent us. Isn't that how I always wine? That's how you roll, wine? and that's why I love you. So <laughs> here we go. Now this is an interesting film. Um, I think this film is a, a, a it is looked on with great affection by members of the Post Geek Singularity. This would be John Borman's 1981 based uh, his adaptation of La Morte d'Arthur, Thomas Mallory's book. I probably mismassacred that, La Morte d'Arthur. <laughs> More French massacre. The French government's never going to let me in the country the way I speak French. <laughs> so here's to, here's to John Borman's 1981 Excalibur, a movie that was entirely filmed in Ireland to put Ireland's production on the map, production people on the map. And this is our second time we have not repeated a director's film on this show, this is the first time we've had another director. I mean, our first director who's had two films. Yes. The first of which was Zardoz. Zardoz. And now we're talking about <laughs> Excalibur, which he made, seven, well, it came out seven years later. Yes. So let's uh, cling to that. Mm, this. Mm, that's good. Ooh, yum. That's very, that's a very nice Refreshing. wine. Refreshing. Thank you, Claude and Candida. Yes, thank you. We drink. Let me have another sw <clears throat> swallow to you guys. Totally. So, Elizabeth, you had never seen this movie before. No. Now, were you familiar with the stories of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table? Yeah. By the way, I should say we watched this film on my Excalibur Blu-ray. And it would be nice if uh, this film was remastered and also included the documentary... That was made in 2013 about the film. I wish they would do that. So you hadn't seen a film before. I had not. But you were familiar with. Had you seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail? Yes, many times. So were you were you uh, a fan <laughs> of that movie? Yes, I'm a fan. So this movie came out a year after The Empire Strikes Back, the same year as Superman 2, the same year as Clash of the Titans, the same year as For Your Eyes Only, the same year <laughs> as Raiders of the Lost Ark. It came out right before those movies. Wow. So, let me ask you, I mean, this is pretty much a retelling or sort of a Cliff's Notes version of the entire King Arthur legend. <laughs> the whole thing. The whole thing. So, why don't we start and talk about, well, how does this movie begin? Well, let's see. It starts with a battle. Uther Pendragon's forces are fighting the Duke of Cornwall. Right. Uther wants to be king. The Duke of Cornwall is resisting him. Right. So there's a battle, and Merlin is there, and he decides to stop the battle by offering... Well, he goes and he goes he to, the to the Lady of the Lake. Lady of the Lake, he gets Excalibur and offers it to Uther to stop the fighting. Yep. 
And 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 Cornwall, the Duke of Cornwall, says, "All right, you've got the sword of Excalibur. I'm willing to yield to you. I'll recognize your kinship if you do what for me." He gives him all the all the land. land to the sea. Yeah. Uh, that's his land. He gives him land. Okay, so he agrees and he gets to that the castle. And it th- seems good. Yeah, it's it a all good seems deal. good. Like, Who hey, wouldn't want oceanfront property. Come he on, he has given. Now you must. Okay, oceanfront property. So he goes for it, and and they and and the Duke of Cornwall invites him for a he, feast. Yes, so he invites him to the castle for a feast. So they all go to the castle. All seems good. Everyone's getting along. Yeah, and he's bragging about his wife. Oh, my wife is so beautiful, and she's such a great dancer. Played oh, by the way by with, the director's daughter, us. John Borman. <laughs> right. His wife, Egraine. Right. So she does her dance, and what did you think of that dance? That was an interesting. It dance. Gave me a Major Woodman in 1981. <laughs> Standing at attention, Major Woodman was. Wow. Just saying. I mean, it was a pretty good dance. Did it this time when you watched it? I don't know. Cause that'd be creepy. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> this time, this time, I've seen this movie so many times. I'm beyond the charms of your grain. <laughs> but in '81, not so much. <laughs> you were how old in '81? I was 14. Ah, uh, yeah, that sounds about right. And the way she writhed around is <laughs> pretty great. It's pretty great. So what happens? I wasn't the only one, apparently. Uther Pendragon had quite oh, the reaction man. as well. His reaction was just off the chain. He was I like, mean, oh my god, I have to have her now. Like at the dinner table. <laughs> he doesn't he's not even subtle about it. He's just at at the Duke of Cornwall's table. And the Duke of Cornwall hears him say this. <laughs> yes. Like it's not like Uther was subtle or he wasn't on his finesse game that no, sorry. He wasn't on his finesse game that night. He was not. <clears throat> he's just like, I must have her. The Duke of Cornwall's like, uh, brah. Yeah, is he, like, lo- he lost his mind. He's lost just like, I have to have her, I have to have her, I'll do anything, I'll have to have her. <laughs> like, really? And what really? It's, what's great is, like, it cuts to the daylight, and they're laying siege to the Duke of Cornwall's castle. They got catapults, they're firing. Yes, yes, so, like, the deal is off now. They start fighting again, and... It just goes to show you, guys are as dumb then as they are now. No comment. Okay. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, so, um, yeah, so he's so crazy. He just wants to have her so badly that he convinces Merlin to get her for him. And so he uses dragon magic and um, changes him into um, the... The likeness of the Duke of Cornwall. The Duke of now, Cornwall. Now, Uther's men go away. Duke of Cornwall says we're going to pursue them and attack them at night. Right. And finish them. Right. So when they do that, Uther hangs out with Merlin. Yep. Then Merlin turns him into the Duke. And by the way, there's a big battle and the Duke of Cornwall dies. And Egraine's right. daughter, Morgana, the Duke of Cornwall and Egraine's daughter, Morgana, feels him die. Yes. She said, my, my father is my dead. My father is dead. And then... Anal Nathrach Uthras Betho Dothiliende. And then uh, after the charm of making, the dragon's breath comes and Uther goes to the castle, flies. He goes to the castle. He like walks on water to get there. Um, and he he is there and he looks like the Duke of Cornwall. And she's like, no, look, see, your dad's right here. <laughs> and the You're girl's t- like, yeah, right. She um, knows he's not him. Yeah. And then he... Um, he has her. He takes her. Yeah. He's a rough brute. A ru- in a full suit of armor. In a full... He doesn't even take his armor what off. What a romantic that guy is. What a... Pff, he's a rapist. So he rapes her and she... Um, she. Oh, yeah. The deal he made with Merlin is that he would get the result Whatever of, of his lust. Yeah. Whatever is born from your lust, I get. Yep. So, of course, she ends up being pregnant. And then we're a year, nine months later. And then they skip directly nine months later, and the baby is born. And they're like living together. He grains now. Right. uh, Uther's wife. Yeah. He he tricked her, and she... She never really knew that. Doesn't want to believe it. Morgana knows. Yeah, but in the end, like, she's, he's with her. And she accepts him. That's how things went in that. Her her husband died. Yeah, I guess so. What do you do? You're the king. Yeah, but he... He was the king. Yeah, he's the king. He's the king. Anyway, 
so the baby's born and and um, Merlin shows up to uh, take his what's due. And Uther can't, there's nothing he can do. And Uther actually like falls in love with the baby and says he's going to become a much better king. Um, stop killing everybody and <laughs> secure the kingdom for his son. But then Merlin comes and takes the baby. And of course... Um, and disappears. And disappears. He takes the baby into the woods and uh, Uther follows trying to get the baby back and he ends up the other knights the knights of cornwall kill him yeah he gets red wedding man yeah he's red out wedding. they kill him they murder him and the the as in his dying breath he he takes excalibur and and slams it into the stone he does he puts it in the stone because he, he doesn't want stone. anyone else to have it no one can have it so there it is stuck it is stuck until the there. rightful well, heir can Mer remove it. Merlin puts a spell on it to make sure it stays there until Uth until um, Arthur can come and well, when the, he's old the, the king, any king. I right. mean, it's Arthur, but the whole land doesn't know that. Right, nobody knows. It's just stuck in the stone. One year, when Zoe was very little, she got the sword out of the stone at Disneyland. Really? She did. Does that mean she's queen of Disneyland now? She is. Well, that's good. They gave her a medal and everything. Wow. <laughs> yep. Anyway, where were we? Well, so then it jumps ahead in time. It does. And I don't know exactly, like, 18 years, 20 years. I don't know how. Yeah, this movie quickly jumps around. It that, Well, yes. It's like the Cliff's Notes versions of all of this. Yeah. It, it all happens very quickly. Yeah, it does. It, it Yeah. Uh, more about that later. So where are where are we now? It jumps forward, and uh, oh yeah, the knights are all uh, jousting to get a turn to try to get this. Stone. Well, a tournament has arisen. A tournament to see who can. I need to get a list of everyone's because now all the names these names are Leon de Grant, so we, we get to be Patrick Stewart. Yeah, yeah. So the knights are jousting to get a turn to try to get Excalibur out of the stone. Yeah, you have to fight to get a chance to. Uh... To try. To draw the sword from the stone. Yeah. So they're doing that, and um, a father with two young boys shows up. And. Kay and Arthur. Yeah. And Arthur's the younger child, and he was supposed to bring the sword, and he left it in the tent, so he goes back to get the sword. Well, well, don't forget, we meet Patrick Stewart oh, yeah. now. And Patrick Stewart... And guess what? Leona Grant. Patrick Stewart looks the same as he always did. He does he look like, the same. He's a, He was always an old man. <laughs> well, yes, you kind of learned that he, yes, he was always an old man. It's true. Yeah. Now, I just want to I just want to make sure that we get all the names correct. Well, it doesn't well, matter. Well, because, no, because Sir Ector has his two sons, Kay, like we right. said. Kay and, Arthur, and Arthur. Sir, Sir Ector's a good man. And Sir Leon de Grants is Patrick Stewart. Okay, right. And, and we meet, we come and we meet Arthur from a baby. Now he's 18 or 20. We don't know exactly how old he is. 16. Six, is he 16? Okay, he's 16. And then um, we see Leon de Grants wins the chance and he goes to try and remove Excalibur from the stone and he fails. He does. He fails. He fails. And who is Leon, Leon, Leon Sir... <laughs> <laughs> Leon de Grant's daughter is who? Oh, yes, that's Guinevere. That's Guinevere. But we don't know that yet. <laughs> no, we don't. Why are you bringing that up now? Well, I'm just saying. I mean, it's so people know. So Patrick Stewart's daughter is Guinevere. Okay, but we, we learn that later on. <laughs> so you were saw, you're in the middle of the story talking about, so 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 Arthur is Sir Kay's squire and was going to get his sword so he could He joust. was going to get his sword for his brother, who's older than him, mm. to be able to uh, compete. And he goes back to the tent, and the sword is gone, and he chases... I can't deal with you. you you're playing with my hair. Oh. <laughs> Look what you've done. I'm putting these on. Yeah, some little kid rips off Sir Kay's sword. <laughs> and he it's run, not good. He runs into the woods, and um, he chases him. He chases him. He uh, ends up... 
what he not ends up catching him. not catching him, but then he's like standing right by Excalibur. And I don't really think he understands the meaning of it. No, he, he just sees a sword and his brother needs a sword, so he uh, he pulls it out of the stone. And then he's like, oh, oh. And he sees the guard that fell asleep by Excalibur. And then he realizes <laughs> what he did. And then I think he puts it back in. And then, uh, of course, a big commotion happens and everybody comes over. And some of the knights are upset. And some are like, oh, this is the king. And so he pulls it out again, and um, uh, half of the knights are like, this is bullshit. <laughs> and the other one, uh, I think Patrick Stewart was like, no, this is our king. Yeah. Yeah. Leon de Grants is a good man. Yeah. <laughs> and then it kind of jumps in time again. Yeah. It jumps in time again, and the land is still at war. You know, Arthur is trying to, I guess, unite everybody. He's trying to be a king, and... And he goes to the aid of Leon de Grants, and mm -hmm. uh, they are fighting, ha let me get this, uh, Sir Urians, okay, Arthur's enemies, Sir Urians is fighting against Leon de Grants and laying siege to his castle, and Arthur and his team show up. They show up, and he sees Guinevere. No, 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 they have the big battle. They do, but he sees her. She's well, like yes, there. Well, so yes, they see each other. Yeah, but more. and he falls instantly in love. That's what guy, knights do in this movie. Mm -hmm. They do. That's what happens in life, man. That's what happens in life? That's dudes see girls and they fall in love with them. Instantly? Yeah, hmm. pretty much. That's what happens. So what? what I, one of my favorite scenes in this movie is Sir, Sir Urien's, who they're fighting against, um... Arthur is not a knight. I mean, he's he has to be knighted or something, and and uh, um, right. You know, um, I think we're mixing up the story. Uh, um, well, no, yeah, because Arthur defeats Urians. They're fighting, and he defeats him, and then he demands that Urians knight him because he, you know he has to be a knight. He can't oh, be a right. knight. And he hands Excalibur to his oh, enemy. Oh, right, he does. He hands it to the enemy. And everybody's freaked and they're out like, by this. Yeah, because they think, like, he's just going to chop his head off. But Urien's, who's taken with this display of... Yes, chivalry. Yes. And, and, and yeah, well, his faith. Of his nobleness. Faith, uh, nobleness, and yes. And knights him. He knights him. And then Arthur brings the country... Unites England. Sure. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> yeah. So then what happens? Well, then, then they, 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 then they go and Arthur and his united forces quell all of the the troubles. They unite the land, and then Arthur says to all these men that are now under him that believe he's a king, he says, "We are going to build." A round table. Right. Where we, we, the knights of the round table, we will come around the table and talk about our valor and our victories and everything. And I'm going to build a great castle. I'm going to build a great hall around the table. And then a great castle around well, the table. Well, before great hall. that, he meets Lancelot, who comes. No, he meets Lancelot later. Oh. It was after the round table? Yes. Maybe. Yeah. It's years later. Oh, okay. But so okay, so <laughs> so Arthur meets. Uh, they build this castle. Everything is they good. They build the castle. They build the round table, and then Lancelot. Well, actually, no. You're right. There's the old castle before they build the new castle. Yeah. Yeah. You're I don't right. think there was the round table yet. No, there's not. I'm sorry. No, because he becomes friends. Well, first he meets Lancelot, who comes and says, I'm the best knight there is. Yeah, he's waiting for somebody that's right. I have him. not met a knight that I have not defeated. And he comes and, and Arthur's like, what the fuck? It's true. And so they they joust or they, they, they fight. fight, sword fight, and Arthur stands his ground. And then... Um, well, to be fair, Arthur does kind of cheat in a way because he's got Excalibur and... <laughs> Well, that's not really true. I mean, cheap. he is the king, I know. But anyway, begrudgingly, there, there's a mutual respect between these two men and they become best friends. Right, and they best become friends. best friends. The only problem is... Lancelot falls instantly in love well, with Guinevere, too. Yeah, and yes, 
and he's assigned to go and get her for the wedding because she's going to marry Arthur and he's assigned to go get her and he goes goes and gets her. Is that when he falls in love with her? Like, what is with these men falling Well, he's already fallen. It happens. How did he see Everything her happens in this movie very quickly. This it is does. Very, it's like there's very, no time to even... It, it is there's a, no subtleties. There's no time to get to know the characters. I, w- I would say this movie is like a poem more than anything else. It is a, sure. to- it is a tone poem encapsulation of the Arthurian mythos. It's done in a very sh- truncated, short I form. I think he just wanted to fit the entire story within two hours. Well, yes. I mean, he did. You know what this is like? This is like I was uh, earlier today. People were talking about how a lot of bands, like metal bands, like like uh, uh, heavy metal bands, are inspired by um, fantasy stories. This fantasy story is like a heavy metal song version of the Arthurian <laughs> mythos, expanded wow. to two hours. It's like a prog rock metal version of. You know, it's 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 it's. And this is the uh, the music video. Yeah, in a way, this is this is an extended music video. This is like Thriller, the way Thriller was an extended music video. This is like a, a two-hour-plus version, an extended version of the Arthurian mythos, but it's metal. Because even the costumes, it's not like there is no period accuracy in this at all. It's no. completely stylized. Like if you it look is. in the court of Arthur, whenever you see the knights, yeah. there's always like the same four. There are four lights. There are lights reflecting the way they're shooting everything. Yeah. They're, 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 uh, uh, there's always lights reflect. I mean, it's all beautiful. It's all stylized. Right, right. And, and so it is not, it is, this is, the, this is a metal. Yeah, there is a lot of light reflecting off surfaces. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a total, I mean, if this wasn't using like Wagner music, it, it would be before they made A Knight's Tale with Heath Ledger. Yeah. You, you expect that there should be like guitar riffs the whole time. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. you could rescore this movie with a raw, not like Alan Parsons and Lady Hawk. We're talking full on Led Zeppelin, Jimmy yeah, I Page. Could, I could see that. I could I see mean, that. That's what this is. This is like the poetic metal long form stairway to heaven version of the Arthurian mythos. Okay. Okay. I mean, it does everything. <sighs> Where are we? Well, so, okay. So, Lancelot comes. <laughs> he, Arthur and oh, Guinevere. He goes get, to get Guinevere, and he's, like, so in love with her that he tells her on the ride there that she asks him, um, so the, the there were other girls in front of him, and she's like, they want to know what they need to do to get your attention. And he's like, oh, there's only... There's only one woman for me. And she's like, well, you can tell me. Like, And he's like, it's you. <laughs> like, you're my queen and you're the wife of my best friend. Yeah. Wow. And I'm thinking, he's the Mac Daddy of all time. No way. What the hell? You're going to drop that on her on her wedding day? Like, she's going to, me- to marry the king and you're going to drop that on her? Again, you can and just he hear just the guitar met her? riff. He just met her, seriously? I mean, like, seriously? You just met me? No, 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 it's not like that, because everything is, takes place in a, in, a, in a period of time, you know, it's it's all truncated. Any one of these scenes could have been a whole movie unto itself. I need to read the book, because I want to see if that's, if it really happened that way. Anyway, but you're still following, you were, when we were watching this movie, you're still following this, you're like, okay, yeah. it's beautiful, it's shot in <laughs> Ireland, and then they build the round table and everything, and, and then... Then we also meet Helen Mirren. We do. The haughty Helen she Mirren. She is She's... now the grown-up sister. Now, here's the funny thing. Helen Mirren, the half-sister or whatever. The half-sister. Of... The half-sister is just grown-up and hot little Helen Mirren, who's this vixenish, dressed in black, up-to-no-good, sorceress wannabe bitch. Well, she's not a bitch at first. Oh no, she is. She's trying to get Merlin to give the secrets, and you can see, yeah. you can see, she's like going to be scheming and everything. Yeah, she's scheming. So, so in the middle of all this, nothing's happened yet. Right. Liam Neeson as Gwen. Liam Neeson. Everyone's had the the round table is there. They're all eating. Everything's good. Camelot has been <laughs> built and like a scene cut. There's Camelot. You know, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. And you see Morgana hanging around, and Sir Gwen, just uh, Liam Neeson, 
just just flat out accuses. Yeah, he's like, um, the queen is having an affair with Lancelot. That's why he's never here, because he's too ashamed to show his face. And she's like, <gasps> no. Here, drink from his cup. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's it uh, again. It happens very quickly. It does, and then the king is like, "Well, there has to be a joust to prove her innocence." Like, how someone does has that... to defend her honor, and he how can't, does that prove anything? He, he can't because def- it's all it's all about tradition and and the orders of succession and all the royal rules of whatever it is. Okay, we're not a monarchy, so I don't. I never learned all that <laughs> stuff. I don't know. Anyway, so what happens is, what happens is, then what happens? Someone has to defend the queen. You know, and right, and no, her honor. nobody, and who steps up? Uh, yeah, that kid, Parsifal, who, who we met earlier. Yes, he followed. Finds, he followed, he Lancelot. followed Lancelot and begged him to be his his squire, or his servant, or his whatever. Parsifal, who's just a boy, his apprentice. Or... He comes to Cam- he comes to the Camelot. He's like, they're all like, go work in the kitchen, boy. Yeah. You know, but then he he sees his opening, yep. like, and he and he says, I'll defend the queen's honor. Yes. Yep, and so he uh, gets on the horse and has the jousting stick, and he's ready to go. Oh, before that, he has to be knighted. So uh, King Arthur knights him, and then he, like, gets on the horse and ready to go. And then and that was his dream. So basically, he's kind of like what Charlie Sheen was in Wall Street going after Gordon Gecko in the <laughs> 80s later. A couple years later, Charlie, Charlie Sheen wanted to be Parsifal, the young kid going after Gordon Gecko. <laughs> Parsifal wanted to be a knight, saw his opening, and got in there. So he did. Give he, it up for Parsifal. He knew what he wanted, and he was persistent, and he, he was got persistent. it. He got it. And he was also very loyal, and he was also, I mean, he should have been king. Well, okay, so, and they're gonna fight now. Sir Gawain and Parsifal are gonna. They're 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 doing. They're, they're gonna fight, and then all of a sudden, Lancelot shows up to defend the honor of the queen, and of course, she's very excited at this point that he showed up. Now, remember, he's had a dream. Oh yeah, Lancelot's had a dream. He he had a dream that he was fighting himself. Himself. And he stabbed himself. In the chest, right there. In the in the side. So what do you think of Lancelot? Up. Was Lancelot dreamy? He was pretty dreamy. Pretty dreamy. Yeah. Yeah. And Arthur, not so much. So I can see why Guinevere was like. Boom, chicka, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway, so so. So he shows up and he's got a wound, and he fights him anyway, and. Which is like mystical. Like he didn't really fight himself. But this wound, this wound was it was spiritual. It was in this movie right. at least, brought on by evil forces. Maybe Morgana. You know who knows? You don't knows? really know. Yeah. So anyway, he jousts and wins. Barely. Barely. And so the king is... Sir Gawain yields and gives up. No, your wife's not a philanderer. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't innocent. really love Lancelot. <laughs> right. It's okay. Because that proves it by jousting. <laughs> so anyway, they uh, decide that she's By the innocent. way, Merlin does warn Arthur. He's like, he bruh, you know, you gotta watch, you gotta watch out because there's evil, uh, there's evil all around you. Right. It's very, it's very mythic. It's very Shakespearean. It's very Julius Caesar. It's very shake. It really is Shakespearean. You know, you've got well, this. Well, everyone was devious and you know, trying to. Play. Well, because Mor- and Morgana's always trying to get more. Uh, Merlin, teach me your secrets. Teach me the charm of making. <laughs> everyone wants to know that. Because, you know, if she has it. And so, Camelot, this, and we don't know, Camelot's been pretty good for, like, years. Yeah. Everything's been good. Yeah, and this, the scenery is beautiful where it's shot. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Like, the forest scenes with all the ferns and just breathtakingly beautiful. It's a beautiful place. And then... And then... Mo- and then... Shit hits the fan. Well, Lancelot and Guinevere, their love blossoms. She now is like head over heels in love with him because he defended her honor and she realizes, wow, this guy is pretty hot. And they're having an affair. She runs off into the woods after him and they have an affair. They're having an affair. And like, again, the time frame of all this, it's like a poem. It, it whips along. 
It goes very fast. It goes very fast. And then, of course, Arthur knows and asks uh, Merlin, are they together? Yes, they're together. What should I do? And and he Arthur's legit a straight-up good guy. Yeah. He's a good guy. He's trying to figure he out, is. how do I rule? How do I be good? I Like, he's truly... He's, he's, he's lawful good if he you're going to play a role-playing game. Yeah. He's lawfully good. Except he didn't heed Merlin's warning about marrying uh, Guinevere. Well, no, he didn't. But whatever. So he's, then, but he goes and finds goes them and in finds the woods. He goes and finds them in the woods, and he takes Excalibur, and he's going to stab them, and he ends up putting it in between them. And, of course, they don't hear or, or sense any of it. No, but then they wake up. They wake up. And here, they wake up, and there's Excalibur there. Right between them. And Lancelot freaks out because he says, the land without a king, the king without a sword. So, like, that was, all of this is symbolic. Yeah. I mean, what a normal movie would take two hours to tell this story, like, you know, Robin and Marion or something, or whatever. I mean, it's, like, this thing is, 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 it whips along. It does. So suddenly, this movie makes a big change here that you commented on. And suddenly... The world yeah. is, is, is is plunged into darkness. It's plunged into darkness and it becomes very even even further from reality. <laughs> and um, first of all, Morgana uh, lures Merlin to show her the dragon and she tricks him and puts a spell on him and basically encases him in in like ice. I mean, without actually, without showing it, she seduces him. I mean, they don't show it like right. as if it's a physical seduction, but not really. Yeah. But maybe it is, but they didn't yeah. do that. So he gets encased because his, his power comes from the land, the earth. Right. You know, he's a necromancer. And she steals the charm of making. She knows how to say, An el nathra, putra, spetho, do Go ahead, say it again. No, no, no. I just love saying it. Are you it. casting spells? No. You'd see the smoke come up. <laughs> What kind of spell are you trying to cast? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so she um, takes all the power and she leaves. Wait, she... Well, you don't really even see it. But yeah, she oh. bails and she basically goes and she, takes... She goes to her brother and she does the spell where she... Anal he, th Nathrak he thinks that she's Guinevere coming back to him. Yep. And she <clears throat> has sex with her brother. She bones down with her bro. She does. And then um, at the end, she reveals that it's her. And he is, like, mortified. And she gets pregnant. And then she leaves... She basically goes back to her ancestral home, Cornwall's castle, at the, at the, uh, at the, but we don't really know that. Like, all of this takes place, you know. We don't know. it. So she bails, she and leaves. the world turns to shit after this. Yeah, and then it gets really weird. And then. Yeah, people are starving. All the knights are wandering around, looking for the Holy Grail. Well, yeah, after the land is going, it, Which, uh, how, they didn't even explain why they're looking for this Holy Grail. Like, what does this have to do with anything? They're just wandering around looking for it. Somehow it's supposed to fix everything. But they don't well, explain. What's the Holy Grail? They don't explain. They don't explain why it at or all. Why they, or. Uh, again, it's like the Cliff's Notes version of the entire Arthurian mythos. Because it's a metal song! Well, anyway. Wah -ha! So you know, it's guitar riffs. Arthur is basically a vegetable. He's just like withering away. <clears throat> and then all the knights are out searching for the Holy Grail. And um, Morgana. And by the way, Excalibur's gone. Yeah, where's. Where is Excalibur? Oh, we, we don't we know don't at know this point. Excalibur remember, he, he had put it between... He, put it, he left it there. Yeah. The yeah. land without a king, the king without a sword. Yeah, so years go by, and the knights just keep looking, and it's dark, and it's it's dreary, and people are... The knights, the knights are going on this grail quest to hopefully bring back Arthur, rejuvenate him... Let him drink, and, and the, you know the the Holy Grail is the power of God, the power of belief, the power of whatever you want to call it. You know, whatever it's supposed to be. I don't know. I'm a Jew, <laughs> so I'm just assuming that you know whatever it has to. You, you got you drink from the Holy Grail, 
And and so what happens is the, the knights go on a ten year grail quest. Ten years. Ten years. And And they the, all seem to disappear. And then it's just um what's his name? It's Mordred. The son of no, Morgana but like, who's and Arthur. the knight that ends Par up... Well, Parcival. Par Parcival. We have to start and say that Morgana... Yeah, Morgana has a baby. Mordred. Mordred. And he lures the knights. He's this creepy kid. The creepiest... Creepy also kid. Also played by John Borman's son. Yeah. Creepy kid who lures the knights into the woods and, like, kills them. And hangs them from trees. Creepy, creepy kid. He's like Joffrey. He is like Joffrey. He's, he's Joffrey. He's thrown out right now. He's totally thrown out. Yeah. And, and when he gets older, he even looks like Joffrey. He does. So, you know, so the night's ten years, life, it's all going to hell. Yeah. And and Parsifal almost gets the grail, but not quite. Yeah, I don't know why he doesn't just grab it. Well, because he hasn't learned wisdom yet. So, anyway... Uh, they try to kill him. They try to hang him with all the other knights. They do hang him. They do hang him, right. And uh, the spur of one of the other knights that's hanging above him <laughs> ends up cutting his rope so he doesn't die. And then he has a dream about the grail. What is the secret of the grail? <laughs> Whom does it serve? supposed to answer the gun is good no no it, is evil. it serves you my lord <laughs> who am i you are author you didn't even get my joke i got your joke it's very john borman he's repeating the motifs of zardoz <laughs> which is true <sighs> but yes yeah, so so parcival understands and the thing is who is this is this god speaking to him what is the secret to yeah. the, one and and the idea of one land one king and all that so parcival gets the grail he gets the grail and he brings it to arthur and he has arthur drink from it and then and then Ar arthur's all better yeah the, the the grail's like the cocaine of the gods <laughs> yeah it's like Ooh, I feel better now. <laughs> ah, it He's happened like, quickly. Okay. I know I've been down let's and out for back 15. To business. Yeah, let's get it. <laughs> Drink some more. <laughs> so, yeah, then he pulls himself together and Well, Mor Mordred has been drawing. He's been he's been He's yes. like Cersei Lannister. He's right. totally Cersei yeah. Lannister. Yeah, totally. He um so yeah, he grows up and he's even creepier as an older kid. And they never say this, but it's kind of insinuated that Morgana has created these zombie troops and these people that everyone's fought. Like, he's right. got a whole army. Right. And so, an army that Arthur now has to go destroy. Well, he comes to see Arthur, and Arthur, and he, he says, what do you have for me? And Arthur's like, well, I can give you my love. And he's like, I don't want your love. Right. <laughs> Which is very Duran Duran of him. <laughs> I don't want your love. <laughs> I don't want. I your want love. your kingdom. Yeah, yeah. I don't want anything from you. <laughs> um, super creepy kid. And um, then what happens? I don't know. Well, then Arthur has to go confront. Oh yes. Has to go confront. He goes to confront. Um, oh, and also, all of this allows uh, Merlin to get free. Right, because he's calling for Merlin. Help me! Help me! And somehow that frees Merlin, sort of, not physically, but... Well, because it's one land, one king, and when the land and the king are liberated, then uh, then Merlin can gather his strength and come back. Right. So he goes to see Morgana, <clears throat> and... Merlin goes to see Morgana. Mer Merlin. For some payback, because that bitch needs to be stepped out on. Like, rolled out. Doesn't Arthur go and see Morgana? Yes, but it's Merlin who does what is... Oh, yeah, Merlin shows up and he's like, oh, you look awfully young and beautiful. Yeah, Morgana's been using her own power on herself, which is what you are not supposed to do. <laughs> As a necromancer, you're supposed to help. You're right. supposed to... Right, she has a not aged at all. And so then he reverses the spell? He does. No. He gives her a taste does. of... Takes away her beauty, accelerates her aging. Here's my question. So if he takes away the spell, wouldn't she just go back to Anal the age? Nafrach uthras betho doth yeliet. Sorry. Go ahead. Cast no, your spell. No, I'm done. That's fine. Just saying. Are you a Merlin wannabe? Oh, 
who isn't? That's why Harry Potter is successful. Everybody wants to be a Mer. It used to be we all were Merlin wannabes when we were kids, and then Harry Potter came along, and everyone's like, "Who's Merlin?" That's true. J.K. Rowling did exact. J.K. Rowling is the Mor- Morgan Le Fay of the Arthurian mythos for kids around the world. She is. She stepped up and she took the magic from the story of King Arthur from all the children that read it until well. Harry Potter. Now nobody reads King Arthur anymore. Everyone's like, ooh, let's. Uh, now we've got Harry Potter yeah, and that's Hogwarts. That's a separate, different story. Come Same on, man. thing. Don't bash on Harry Potter. Yeah, let's not be a king or a knight anymore. Let's be a boy wizard. Every kid's entitled. Harry Potter's the ultimate example of what helicopter Can't parenting leads more to. more than one story about magic exist in this world? Well, because one's about adults and one's about kids. Harry Potter yeah, is the infantilization of all imagination connoisseurs that are young. No longer do you read stories about adults. Let's read Harry Potter. Let's 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 make Jake Lloyd, Anakin Skywalker. Eh, let's, let's appeal to our kids. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> Not going off on a rant. Wow. Okay. Now I know how you feel about Harry Potter. There are no kids in Lord of the Rings. The hobbits could be kid proxies, but they're not really kid proxies. You know what Harry Potter did? It made all fantasy stories about kids and young adults. You know what young adults used to read when I when I was a kid? You read Stephen King's The Stand. That's what you read. You don't read YA fiction. You re- you, you snuck R-rated horror fiction. You read awesome fantasy stories. And now it's like, oh, kids have to read Harry Potter because they can't deal with King Arthur. It's just a theory I have. I have to think about this. This is interesting. In, interesting thing. Well, think you're, about it. It's you're true. Up some, some it's true. Our culture has made kids not have to grapple with adulthood by making it all about children. You don't have to deal with yeah. the Grail quest. You don't have to deal with being a knight or reading about King Arthur. Let's read about Harry Potter and ooh, Voldemort. Interesting. That's interesting. Let's keep talking yeah, about this, but well, not right now. Okay. I'm, I'm just I'm, saying. I'm sorry. I don't mean to go off on a rant. <laughs> You know it's true, though. You know it's true. <laughs> I'm I'm following what you're saying. Because I'm right. I, I'm, I'm I'm the viceroy of verisimilitude and the archbishop of Canterbury. <laughs> I know. What we've done to children is a damn shame. I know. Yes, it is. It is a shame what we've done to children. That is true. Okay, let's get back to our movie. No one's fucking their sister in Harry Potter. Okay, let's get back to the Just story. Saying. This is not a review of Harry Potter. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying how Harry Potter has supplanted certain myths we already had. So, anyway, Morgan Le Fay <laughs> is... is de- Morgana is defeated. She... Yeah, so my question was... When you went off on your rant, my question was... Mm. what? Okay, so if he takes away the spell, and she, wouldn't she just be the age that she would be at he, that time but he no, he, no he she turns into this really 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 yeah. old yeah because he gooses her he's like your power has a cost you've been keeping yourself young against the wishes of nature and magic and necromancy you have broken the rules she was a vain egomaniacal <laughs> evil woman now admittedly probably be, she became that way because uther pendragon raped her mother in front of her so really, this story... She was it, a damaged child. She was a damaged child, damaged by another cis, white, male, patriarchal fuckhead, right? Am I right? That's what happens. This is what happens when, when the patriarchy <laughs> oh is a Oh my lot. god, I'm, the rant. I'm just kidding, I don't believe in that at all. I'm just saying, but you could. It could be a reading of this myth, at least this movie. I can't even believe you went there. Okay. Can we continue with the movie, please? Yeah, yeah. Jeez Louise. Let's finish this bottle of wine. So anyway, um, what's his name? Mordred. Mordred's troops Mord- are massing for battle. And he, by the way, it's a he desperate... He comes and he's just, he's so disgusted that his mother mm. is this old lady. He kills her. He straight up kills her. He straight up kills his own mother. Yeah. 
because you know he doesn't try and help her. But yeah, he's too disgusted. I think Joffrey really is based off of this. Of course, character. it all look. Everything is based off the Arthurian mythos. <laughs> Everything, all of it. Gilgamesh, Greek myth, but I mean the Arthurian mythos. It's all there. It's all just variations on a theme. Just like every fantasy story is based on Lord of the Rings. The details are different. <clears throat> but you're right. Right. You're absolutely right. So, then... Well, so once Morgana is killed, uh, Mordred's troops are massing. Arthur has very few men. It's a, it's, a, it's a hopeless battle that can't be won. But... When remember when Morgan uh, uh, when um, um, uh, uh, Merlin causes this to happen, he causes Morgana to to bring oh, the fog right. and all of Morgana's power that was stolen from Merlin brings up a fog and yes. So after he kills his mother, there's a big fog surrounding. Right. Surrounding. Well, I'm, I'm just hearing Tallulah bark. I yeah, I you. know. I'm listening to. Does she have to go to the bathroom? I don't know. No, she doesn't. Well, so, so this pitch battle is going to happen. Yeah. It's a hopeless battle because Arthur can't. She, he's got very few men. Right. And they have this final battle, but they're they under cover of the the fog that was that Morgana created when when uh, her magic was taken away from her, uh, uh, taken back by Merlin. There's this final battle. And they actually do pretty well, and then Arthur yes, and, and then Arthur, Arthur and Mordred and face off. Mordred, Mor, Mordred, 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 fight each other, and they end up stabbing each other, and and it's dope. It's so he got. I mean, Arthur's got he's got a pike through him, and he's pulling himself down the pike, and he takes Excalibur and drives it into Mordred's chest. He does. Him. He kills him. And Arthur is not quite dead, and he asks um, Parsival. Parsival to take Excalibur and throw it into a lake. So, so the Lady of Lake can take it back. But he doesn't it, explain that. He just says, go and throw it into the lake and tell me what happens. So he goes, and he just can't throw it into the lake. So he comes back. And Arthur's like, so what happened when you threw it in the lake? He's, and he's like, like uh, nothing it. happened. Oh, I couldn't do it. <laughs> he's like, go do it. And he explains about the lady in the lake. And so he does. He tosses it into the lake. And her hand comes up and catches the sword. And she takes it. And, and it's awesome. And you know, there's a lot of Wagner music. The Ring of the Nibelung is in this movie a lot. A lot. A lot of the music. A lot. So good. A it's lot, the best use of Wagner, you know, maybe ever. Maybe one too many times. Never! No way! Yeah. Come on, man. Goethe Damerung, <laughs> Tristan and Isol, come on. I'm a so, Jew and I love Wagner's Ring of the Nibelung Cycle. I love it too, but Straight I, up he kept playing it. it. What? Wagner. Oh. It, yeah, they just played it a lot. It was great! Never gets old. Look, they couldn't play Zeppelin or some other metal band, so they had to play Wagner. Wagner was as close to metal as John Borman could get. No, it was. It's a great piece, and it's it's very like intense and driving. But I think they played it one too many times. All right. And then, of course, uh, Percival throws it. The Lady of Lake comes, and when he goes back, he finds Galadriel and the elves taking Arthur to the Grey Havens. Right. Yes. And Annie Lennox starts singing Into the West. Yes. <laughs> no, and she that's how it really. ends. And that's how it ends. Arthur goes to the Grey Havens to be with the rest of the elves. And there you go. Okay, Elizabeth. Uh, this <laughs> took a long time to explain this. Wow. But, um, yes, it did. What? Now, we have, a, we have an amazing... First of all, we want to mention that Claude and Candida, who watch the show, Claude has written us a script, but we have to learn it. Like, we were looking at it today. <laughs> like, there's... There, so we can't, we're not going to do it, we're not going to perform it for you now. But we will. There's a lot of, Claude, it's a lot of work. It's like six pages. It's a whole play. It's a play. We're going to get to that, but not in this episode. <laughs> we might have to do a special episode just for this. So, what did you think of Excalibur, Elizabeth? Well, I didn't hate it. 
But I had, and I had some a few issues with it. <laughs> no, you had a lot of issues. You <laughs> I had were like, a lot of issues. you were like with the Grail question. Like this movie got weird all of a sudden. Like what's happening? It got I don't. So weird. What's going on? Who's this guy? What is the secret of the Grail? Like, who does, like it was. It, you know what is this? And you know what? Also, really bugged me and like threw me out of the film every single time. Yeah, tell everybody what you didn't like. I'm sorry, but I did not like Merlin. I did not like the way he was modulating his voice. It, it just was so ridiculous to me. And it threw me out of the film every single time. You stole his wife. You stole his castle. Now no one trusts you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I know. Yeah, that was so weird. I love it, but okay. Nicole Williamson has done two things in his life that will always be... He will he will be let into the Valhalla of movie stars for one is this, one is is Merlin. The other, of course, is Father Morning in Exorcist Three. Well, I found it very. It is a very it is a very stylized performance. Right. It's very theatrical. I can understand the take on it. Might be off-putting to but some. But this was not a play. This was a film. Nightmare to others. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I did not like his his acting in this at all. It was very weird. Okay, that's that. I that's fair. <laughs> Look, I can't tell you how to feel about something. Um, yeah. That's it. That's all I have to say. I mean, you what I, I, you you said the movie. It looks this movie does. It's beautifully photographed. It's beautiful. And the st how did you feel about the stylization of it? It is very stylized. I, I do like I do like stylized films. Like, come on, man! I'm a huge Wes Anderson fa fan. I love that stuff, but um, I just felt like the, the it was jumping too fast. Like you never got to feel. Like, you knew the characters, or you cared about them. It just was, like, so... It just happened so quickly, and... Right. And, and it would shift from one thing, and then 20 years later, and then, it would, and then it would shift to, like, 10 years later, and it was just this disjointed jumping around with Merlin doing his weird voice thing. So I, I've always felt that this movie... Like, I, when I first saw it, I didn't like it very much. And when I saw it again, well, I actually saw this again because they had a public sneak of Raiders of the Lost Ark for the first time with Excalibur. And I went and saw it a second time and I realized, like, if you're looking for a straightforward narrative, this is not that. It, it really is like more of a, of a tone poem or an epic metal song about the right. Arthurian mythos. But I mean, even it, so, as a poem, I had issues with it. No, I mean, I can see that because looking at it now, look, especially after we've been given 10 episode seasons of Game of Thrones right. and we've seen these kinds of, this kind of court intrigue and the whole, I mean, they expect, you see Morgana standing behind the, our, uh, the, the Knights of the Round Table and she's just going like, mm-hmm, you know, and, <laughs> and you're supposed to get what five episodes of Game of Thrones would give you. Right. And, and I get it. I mean, as we've moved on, but... At the time, I, I mean, this was... Yeah, I mean, I, I could, if, if I tried to picture myself watching this in the 80s, I probably would feel a little different about it, maybe? Well, I don't know. I mean, it was really, like, uh, here's the way I feel about it now. In terms of the pantheon of cinema, and I would say beginning with Star Wars. Star Wars, what, what happened was science fiction, fantasy, and horror... Fantasy is n never caught on at the time the way horror and science fiction did. Right. You had Star Wars, you had Alien, but there was never the equivalent. They tried, like Dragon Slayer, this. There was a lot of other low, cheesier, low-budget fantasy movies, right. Sword and the Sorcerer. Mm -hmm. But this this tried to do that, and, and it took sort of a moribund genre at the time when all of these epic... Fan like, what's really interesting is, like I said, it came out within the same few months of... Clash of the Titans, which was Ray Harryhausen coming back and doing his last big epic film about the gods of Olympus and, you know, Perseus and and those myths. So it was interesting. Excalibur and Clash of the Titans, and yet it just wasn't quite there yet. The the 
the storytelling hadn't caught up with the genre. Right. Whereas right. horror and and science fiction had. Right. And and I think that 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 the way that we read myths is kind of I think what he was going for. I think John yeah, Borman was that. trying to create a sense memory myth yes, of okay. the Arthurian like like he was trying to encapsulate all this mythological these stories into not necessarily a narrative but a, a I don't know like a, mono, a monograph almost something that it, it it wasn't a traditional narrative structured film. Yeah, okay. Okay. I mean, you don't have to buy off on that. <laughs> I can see that it's like a, a, an epic poem. Because I know you were frustrated because you, you know, you're a very astute watcher. You're a very smart viewer of these things, and you get. But this was not like you're, you're keyed in to following a certain. This did not do that. This did not give a traditional narrative. So you're, you're even the most well, astute and, and viewer. And it doesn't have to be a traditional narrative. There were just things about it, even as an epic poem, that were weird to me. Well, there's a lot of missing beats. Yeah. You know, it, it gives you it gives you the broad strokes. This movie is literally not just about sword strokes, but broad strokes. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think he tried to cover too much in a short amount of time. I agree. Yeah. Well, should we see what other people have to say? Let's. Um, we're already over our time, by the way. Oh we my haven't God. even we, wow. we, have, we haven't even jumped in. That took us a long time to tell that story. <laughs> um, so let's see what we've got here. People are, are sending in stuff here. Uh, wow. Uh, um, uh, let's see. Uh, wait, where are we? Wait, have I have I gone all this? Oh no. Um, well, Jules. Jules Goodwin is here. By the way, Jules, I did talk about your Dark Knight story. As a matter of fact, people have commented on it in the comments, I think it was two two episodes ago of Rob Observations, about your Joker theory, about how Joker is actually the hero of the Dark Knight. Hmm. Um, let's see. Uh, Stubble McShave says, I like Blind Guardian. That's a German metal band that sings about Tolkien. Other than Tolkien, they've also done a few Wheel of Time songs. I recommend the orchestral version of Wheel of Time. A somewhat toned-down version would actually work pretty good as the music for the title or intro. Wow, I gotta listen. I don't know Blind Guardian. I gotta hook that up. Uh, Jules Goodwin is here. Hello, Jules. Thank you, by the way, for your incredible support of this channel. Thank One you. One of two. As a veteran, there's a saying we used to have in the Army. Never reinforce failure. Isn't that what they're doing with the Snyder Cut? even if they only use 20 to 30 million to finish by the end of it all and i still think it'll be 50 to 70 million i, I do too sir they'll have sunk close to 500 million for a movie that came out four years ago and massively flopped a and yet they sit and wonder why there's why they're second to the mcu i okay i would say to you i agree with that however Zack Snyder was never able to finish the movie that he was going to make in the first place. They released Justice League. They made that that studio administration made those choices. They did what they did, and now that there's a second source of funding, it, it's almost like a do-over from scratch because this footage was already shot. They use it for their movie, and this is this is going to be a, a I think a brand new experience. I I want to see what happens, but yeah. I think for the most part it is it's throwing good money after bad but no one's ever seen this and for HBO Max they already have a financial model that works based on how many their subscribers they're going to get so even if they invest 50 million dollars and they put it out as four episodes or even five episodes say it's say it's four episodes that's only 10 million dollars an episode or 10 12 million an episode that's like an episode of Game of Thrones so they're getting their own miniseries, their own Mandalorian-esque show, and it's it's cheap as far as their production model goes. So I think it could be I think it could work. Anonymous sends in a tip and says, as a Star Wars fan, if you ever need a quick laugh, YouTube the clip Darth L. Jackson. I've seen it. It's Sam L. Jackson's voice dubbed over a few of Darth Vader's scenes from the early movies. Mm -hmm. Truly hilarious. No, it, it, it is, and it's a lot like the Vader sessions that we talked about. The Vader sessions did it first, but... 
Uh, Timbula the Spider Monkey is here and says, I made a list of my top ten scenes of all time. The scene where Urien's knights Arthur in the moat around Leon de Grant's castle was number seven. I love this movie. From its use of Siegfried's funeral march at the beginning to the weird ending with the boat. No, it's that's Galadriel, man. That's the <laughs> elves taking him to the Grey Havens. I, I agree with you, Timbula. I love this movie, too. It's a movie I constantly come back to again and again and again. Um, so, uh, But I know it's divisive or divisive, depending on where you're from. Um, and I agree. And I like the Siegfried. Uh, I'm telling you, I, the use of Wagner in this is just, you can't get enough of it. Eyes on the Wire sends in a tip and says, Because Magneto was reading The Once and Future King in prison, I sought out T.H. White's book and its exploration of the Arthurian legend. Have you read it? I have read it. I read it soon after I saw this film when I was in junior high school. And I mean, I, I, li I love the Arthurian mythos. I love them. Yes. And um, I think they're great. P.S. Love the energy and differing views you two bring to the show. Keep up the great work. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> Zach Losel is here. Hello, Zach. How are Hello. you? Bonjour and Lachaya, my two favorite <laughs> guardians of good times. I've worked up the courage to make a video. I can't wait to send it. Oh, also, I awesome. may be sending a thank you package. Elizabeth, favorite flavors of what? Of what? <laughs> what are your favorite flavors? Uh, of what, though? I don't know. I like, say, fruit. What are your favorite fruits? Mango. You never get off the boat to get mangoes, though. I don't. No, that's what we learned in Apocalypse Now. Oh. I'm going to go get me some mangoes. Spread it all around. No, never mind. It's and I love berries. But I also love vanilla. Mm-hmm. I like cinnamon in my coffee. I do that every morning for you. Yes, you do. What else? I don't know. Flavors. It could be anything. Well, that's true. I don't know either. <laughs> uh, Dan V is here. Says, I don't know if either you, of you have seen it, but honestly prefer the Merlin miniseries starring Sam Neill over Excalibur. There are more liberties taken with Merlin there for all of Arthur's reign, but it explains more compared to the film with context. Look, I agree. I think almost all the stories of the Arthurian mythos are... Uh, 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 deal with it in a better way than Excalibur, but Excalibur, I believe, has a singular way of dealing with that um, <laughs> that story. You know? <laughs> what? Okay, okay. That's fine. Uh, Malbrain <laughs> sends in a super chat and says, Excalibur was made here in Ireland and many of Borman's films, uh, here in Ireland, as were, were many of Borman's films. He still lives here, actually. Either of you been to Ireland? You should no, come. No, I want we to have many so libations. badly. I, I think Ireland it's is one like of the places. at the top of my list. I want to go there so bad. I want to go to Ireland. And I've always dreamt about going to Ireland for like a year. As long as I had enough in my bank account, I wanted to walk all around <laughs> Ireland and I wanted to stop at every distillery and drink from every place that makes liquor in Ireland. That's why. Well, I was always obsessed with Ireland. Even though I am not Irish, I always tended to date Irish guys when I was young and I was always obsessed with Ireland and I still have not been to Ireland. I haven't either. Yeah. We need to go there. We'll have to do that. We'll do that when we go to Portugal with Candida and Claude. We'll just zip on up yes. to Ireland. Sounds awesome. <laughs> uh, I, I I would like to do that. Um, uh, the Merlin TV show that aired on the BBC is also really good. and would, It's on Netflix where it took inspiration from Smallville. I don't completely disagree with you either, Rob, with the H. Harry Potter comparison. I read The Once and Future King as a sixth grader. Yeah, and I bet it, you liked it better than Harry Potter. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know. I understand. <laughs> Eyes on the Wire sends in a tip and says, R&B bringing the hot passion tonight. Preach on, brother. <laughs> oh, no. I always will. You'll always, I'll always sell it to you straight or send it to you straight. <sighs> Dan V sends in a tip and says, The Gargoyles TV show also does an awesome job with magic in the first five episodes, then later with Camelot and bringing in King Arthur, Macbeth, and more mages. I would strongly recommend the first two seasons on Disney Plus if you like Arthur and Shakespeare. I love mm. Gargoyles, and, I and seen I, it. It, you'd like it. It's really good. 
uh, JB Gatrokets, uh, Gatrokets, what a cool name, sends in a super chat and says, do you have to be a caliber before you are an X caliber? <laughs> uh, that's very funny. I, I would say no. But uh, that's very funny. Throg is here. Throg, Throg Wagner is here. Sends in a tip and says, there are way too many interpretations of Arthurian legend. Parsifal or Percival replaced Galahad or even Gwaine. Some omit. Nicole Williamson had the nickname of box office killer. He was known as bad luck for films. He was also a notorious oh, well, drunk. You know. But I'm I loved him anyway. I'm not the only one who had a problem with him. Oh, man. Sorry. Uh, Julius Goodwin sends in a super chat and says, so really, she's just saying this film is the DCEU of the Arthurian legends <laughs> rushing to the end. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm going to text Sophie. Um, Claudius Black, our friend Claudius is here. Hello, Claudius. <laughs> Hello. Jules, that was bad. Claudius says, Skyfall and now Harry Potter. I've been listening to you since April 2019, and I did not hear your dictate for Harry Potter. Harry Potter is much better than Star Wars. There will be a lot Whoa. to discuss over bottles of vino overlooking the Rio <laughs> Tejo Lisbon. Now, look, just so you know, my take on Harry Potter <laughs> is one of, I, I say it kiddingly, I think Harry Potter is amazing. I really do. But I do find it distressing that a lot of stories that have endured for a long time have been replaced by infantilized versions of things. And, and look, it's happened all across our culture as we are, what we're doing to me, look, J.K. Rowling wrote, what, what she did was what a lot of fantasy writers wrote. She took all of this fantasy, Tolkien, Stephen Donaldson, Terry Brooks, Arthurian mythos, and she, she put it together in, in, a, in a frothy mix for her children. I mean, that's what she was doing. She was telling her kids those stories, and, and they were well done, and she wrote them down, and I think that's fantastic. What I don't like is the fact that those myths supplant myths that are deeper and more meaningful, I think, and that have more adult themes that I think are getting pushed aside because we don't want to leave our children. We don't want none of us. We don't want to leave our childhoods. You know, we would rather live in a world that is a little bit more cut and dried, a little less gray. We don't want to deal. We're, we. We are polarized now because we are not the intellects we should be dealing with very difficult problems. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying Harry Potter is the root cause of all that. I think it's a symptom of that. And I think all of our entertainment, I, that's why I think what's happened to Star Trek is so pernicious. Because I think it's, it's being made by people that aren't as smart as they should be, that are writing stories that aren't as good as they should be, and they're treading on older stories that were better than what they are churning out. Mm. And we are all made lesser because of it. Just a theory. Kaz Graphics. Kaz, you are supporting this channel. Thank you so much. Thank you much. so much for that. And by the way, we have we have some of Kaz's cheese left. Yes, we do. We haven't finished it all. Oh my God, my members of this movie is my English teacher showing this in a classroom. It was awesome, especially <laughs> in high school. Your amazing review of Beecher's Cheese will be showing up <laughs> on their Facebook page. Wow. Oh, my God. Very cool. That cheese is amazing. I've done research into that. we got to get their mac and cheese. we gotta, I got to order some of that mac and cheese. Oh, yes. Uh, that Beecher's Cheese was so great. <laughs> um, but, yeah, they, so have, they have all of their permission to put it on the, the page. Yeah, it's very cool. Here, so people can look at you. Let's, uh, here, how about that? Is that better? Yes. Uh, Throg Ritchie sends in a tip and says, I still can't believe Guy Ritchie fucked up the Arthurian lore. Well, he did the wrong thing. You know, again, everybody tries to contemporize everything for modern audiences rather than try and make them timeless for modern audiences, which I think is, I, I just, I mean, I get it, but I don't think it works. First off, Warner Brothers executives wanted bonuses. That's why we got the Whedon cut after they took advantage of the tragedy that befell Zack and his family. I think part of that is absolutely true. I think you're right about that. Claudius Black sends in a tip and says, Reconsidering Excalibur, I watched Excalibur and Empire repeatedly as a teenager. <laughs> Loved it. Now I think we should reconsider the epic movie. Is it possible to do justice to Arthur or Alexander in two to four hours? We would never do a two-hour World War II movie. No, I think what you've got to do yeah. 
is, look, even one of my favorite things ever done about World War II, the winds of war, was like, what, 10 hours or 12 hours or something? That's what's so great about the world we live in now is that um, we can have these long-form things. But yeah. you're absolutely right. You can't do justice to these <clears throat> no. epic stories. Uh, Mukbang is here. Just support. I love this legend. <laughs> My favorite quasi iteration is <coughs> Eyes of the Dragon by Stephen King. I loved Eyes of the Dragon. And that was done as a kid's book, too. Hey, look what Sir Claudius says. <laughs> Anal Nathrak Othrad Besad Doth Yelende. Uh, but you're doing it, by the way. I can't pronounce that. I don't know how to read that. I just. Mine's completely phonetic, like my French. <laughs> Throg Dictator sends in a tip. Do you think the film is misframed? It always looks like everybody in close ups have the tops of their head cut off. Well, you've probably been watching the wrong aspect ratio, um, which is true. I don't know what the proper... I mean, this looked like it was 185 on the disc, but it might be um, 166. I'm not sure, but it's frequently misframed. A lot of movies are misframed. I hate that. Uh, hey, you two. Oh, Moad... Uh, I love this. Muadib. <laughs> Muadib. Uh, hey, you two. Just found out a local independent theater is opening up with restrictions on Monday... Every other road, distancing, sanitation. We're going to see the first Harry Potter film, and it's going to be so nice to be back in the theater. Yay, movies. Well, that's really cool. Oh, very cool. I'm all about that. Uh, Jim Wiley sent a super chat and says, I would want to see a season, a four season remake of Excalibur on HBO Max. Yes. I would love to see that with the same style, the yes. same stylized. Hell, John Borman, I think, is still alive. Get him to be a producer. <laughs> uh, I think it's a great idea. Anthony Gonzalez sends in a tip and says, in a crossover, what would Hannibal do about Dexter or vice versa? What would oh. Dexter do about Hannibal? Ask Brian Fuller one of these days. I will ask him that. I, you know, I think they would find a kinship, but I don't think Dexter would... I think I think Hannibal would appreciate that Dexter's actually doing the world a service. And as long as their interests didn't cross, but that would be interesting, what, what happens when they do? There's the story. Yep. Uh, Alexander also uh, hello Alexander the first movie I saw that didn't I didn't have any expectations for but it blew me away was M. Night Shyamalan's Unbreakable what's a movie that you didn't have any expectations for that blew you away also what movie do you need wine to actually get through it <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you you know what I have an answer for that the summer of 1988 I had moved to California and the movie that a friend of mine, my friend Taylor White and I, joked about was Die Hard. Because Bruce Willis was the star of Moonlighting and the ad campaign. And we went and saw, they had these public sneaks where they would put a movie in regular theaters like two weeks or a week before it opened to generate word of mouth. They don't do that much anymore. It's very rare. But we were joking about Die Hard for weeks. And it <laughs> came around and we're like, we're going to go see it. Ha ha ha. And, oh my God, it was unbelievable. Die Hard, watching that for the first time, our jaws were on the floor. We couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. Was there a movie like that you had no ex expectation for that you liked? You know, I need time to think about that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, there's no wrong answers. I mean, that's a, that's a very esoteric question. Yeah. I mean, you've been a mom. It's not like movies. Like, I would go to movies, like, every Friday. You When you go with, to movies, you went with your kids. I mean, you weren't, like, scouring the papers going, I really want to see that. Yeah, I mean, there was a period of time, you know, once I had kids that I didn't really go to movies very often. But still. Um, yeah, you're not like, ooh, let's go see Indecent Proposal tonight. <laughs> right? Being a mom. Well, I mean, I did go see movies. Well, no, I know. I'm not, but but it's different. Like like, it's not like that was the focus of your world. Right. Like in my world, the focus of my world was movies. Right. It's like what's going on. But you're like, you weren't like that. Well, only because I had responsibilities. Yeah, I had none. I still barely do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm joking at my own expense, of course. You're supposed to say. No, 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 you have good responsibilities. You're supposed to... Right now, you have lots of responsibilities. I do have lots of responsibilities. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. More than I've ever had, actually. <laughs> Who knew you could grow up at 53? Oh, did you have to say my actual age? Oh, man. No, I'm just kidding. I don't People care. People know your age. It's true. <laughs> 
Um, Thro Throg, uh, thank you for the generous support, sir. That was between... It, it, what he's done for our asses <laughs> has been uh, above and beyond, but he continues. Throg has sent us a lot of toilet paper. Anthony and Throg, I'm telling you. Uh, Claude, I love you, man, but in no world is Chocolat better than Skyfall. Tag your <laughs> it. Star Wars rules. Oh, man, Claude, Throg is stepping up. <laughs> He is stepping up and uh, chalk a lot better than Skyfall. You know what? Skyfall blows, dude. I'm sorry. Everyone loves this Skyfall business. Skyfall was one of the more disappointing movies I've ever seen. But I don't want to get into that. Um, uh, Julius says, just wondering if Miss Elizabeth has a website for people to order her bags or other items she sells. Oh, well, right now I'm selling off of my Instagram um, and what is your Instagram? My Instagram is E G Bell B E L L E. Right. And um, I'm working on a website, but right now I am just using Instagram. And I, I did have an Etsy, but I'm not using that right now mm. either. Mm. Mm. But yeah, Instagram. Well, uh, we're we're like uh, we're 20 minutes over. <laughs> wow. What's well, 20 minutes wow. over? How did that happen? Uh, cause we're loquacious. <laughs> we are. We have lots to say. We do. Well, this was a fine episode of whining about movies. <laughs> yes. It's uh, it's it's it was a long one. This was a good one. It was a long one. I'm so, surprised. So, Elizabeth, we come to the time when we have to uh, uh, give you our <laughs> bottoms up ranking of Excalibur. I, I kept a sip. I know, me too. I've kept a sip. A tiny, tiny. I mean, we, we should like bring two bottles of wine just no, because. No, no. We can't drink Come two on. bottles of wine every three days. Every other day. Three days a week. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, <laughs> I got to get rid, rid of my quarantine wine weight. Yeah, it's time. It's time for us to like... It's know. time to fix my clock. You Vanity know. 6 is so sweet. For you Prince fans out there. Um, so on our scale of one glass to four glasses of wine... Our bottoms up scale. Why is it a bottoms up scale? So our scale is from one to four because there are four glasses of wine in a bottle, at least the way Rob pours. Yeah. Yeah. So that's our scale, one to four. So Elizabeth, on a on our bottoms up scale of one to four glasses of wine, one being the least, four being the most, what would you give Excalibur? How many glasses of wine would you give John Borman's 1981 Arthurian <gasps> tone poem? Arthurian, Arthurian, not Arth, it's Arthurian. Say tone that poem. ten times holding your tongue. Anna Lathra Uthrasma. <laughs> okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, what would you say it was? Stop trying to cast a spell on me. All right. You cast a spell on me every day. Aw. That's so sweet. Um, I'm going to give this... Oh, this is hard. Can't help you. I'm going to give this 2.75. 2.75. All right. All right. 2.75. I give Excalibur three glasses of wine. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I don't love it. Three glasses of wine. Well, if you love it, give it more. No, obje objectively on a scale, there's a lot of issues with this film as we've sort See, of See, did I into. change your mind a little bit? Nope. No. A little, a little tiny no, bit. no, 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 no. <laughs> mm -mm. Well, there you go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, gentle beings, kind folks, you, Morgan LaFay's, you, you, Nicole Williamson, Merlins, all of you out there, all of you members of the Post Geek Singularity community, I want to thank you for all the generous support you give this channel. Yes, thank you. And uh, I don't know what our next movie is going to be. <laughs> Can but I pick? No, you can't pick. No, because you'll pick something. No. You pick Sound of Music. Yeah, and what did you think of Sound would of Music? Would you have picked Excalibur? Yeah. No, you wouldn't have. Yes, I totally would have. No, you wouldn't have. We'll talk about it. So we don't know what it is. We'll talk about it tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see. See, the fun thing is to show you movies that you haven't seen. There's a few movies that you haven't seen. Not many. There's one that I can think of that you have not seen. What's that? Moonrise Kingdom. Oh, you're, uh, that is true. That is a Wes Anderson movie I haven't seen. I own it, but I've never seen it. That's not a bad one. 
I don't know if we want to delve into that, though. Would that be the first Wes Anderson movie we should watch? No, it's not my favorite. I yeah. do love it. But yeah. but you've seen all the other ones. Well, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I'm like, uh, okay, so hang on a second. Uh, so, wait. <laughs> People keep sending in. <laughs> no one's going to let us go. So, the world's greatest detective. Send in a super chat and says, Rob, I love this movie so much. Sam Neill was also an amazing Merlin in a TV movie with Isabella Rossellini and Rutger Hauer. Love watching you and your beautiful Guinevere Elizabeth Aww, do this show. Oh, that's so you. nice. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> yeah, I got to watch this. You're the second person that's mentioned that tonight. We gotta I would watch, watch that. I, love I know it. Isabella I just didn't Rosalini. see it. Yeah, we should watch that. Totally. Frog Billionaire sends in a tip and says, Anytime <laughs> you want to come to the islands, we will host you and Elizabeth Whoa. and look at our beautiful views from the islands and the, and drink magnificent wine, sample great island <gasps> food, also bring Claude and Candida. Oh, my God. Hashtag Let's go. not a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> we'll still come. Yeah. We'll All come. islands. I think we can. <laughs> and I think Claude and Candida are on the East Coast, too. We should just do a meetup. By oh, the way. so cool. By the way, uh, the Zoom birthday party worked out so well that we're going to do I'm going to do two Rob observations Zoom parties but we're going to do a Zoom whining about movies um, party. Well, the party where we're we're going to talk about a movie but on Zoom so we can all go on to Zoom if you want. We're going to set up those <laughs> chats and we're going to we're going to do one one a month. So we'll do one of these live so it won't be on it won't be on uh, this and you know no super chats. We're just going to hang out. All you have to do is bring your wine, and we'll we'll all chat. We'll all talk. Oh, that would be I think, fun. Won't that be fun? Yeah. Sir Claudius, mon ami, remember the Arthurian legends are an amalgamation of other stories. Just like Star Wars and Harry Potter had many influences, Harry Potter is just a better set of movies. <laughs> By the way, this is a great time for Elizaviews. You know, I think we should move it to six. Everyone wants us. Yeah, I've been thinking. Yeah, we need to do it at an earlier time. We're gonna we're gonna move it to six, Elizabeth. So we'll be here Monday night at six. Because I think that's a better time. I do too. Everybody wants us to do that. So Claude, you are correct. All right then. All righty. We're gonna bring an end to episode thirty-one of Elizabeth. <sighs> yes, we are. So Elizabeth, first of all, I want to thank everybody for your very generous support. Thank you, everybody who watches thank the you. channel. I'm glad you like this channel. Um, it, it's everyone it, it, what I love about this channel is we have a whole different audience not an entirely different audience but it's a different show than Rob's Observations and I can be a little looser <laughs> really? <laughs> really? really it's great and it, I, it's great to have you my Guinevere with me aw thank you my love. Guinevere with me uh, you know um, and uh, so that's great uh, so what do we say at the end of the show Elizabeth? everyone you meet has a story to tell that you have yet to hear and all you have to do is listen. That is correct. I said it right this time. You said it right that time. <laughs> well, and I want to thank Louis Yu, who's always here. I want to thank, ooh, Detective Jim Boyers is here and his wife Heidi. I want to thank them, our whole moderating staff. Uh, Mike Bodden, Greg Smith, Jordy Lyons, Louis Yu, Jim, uh, they're all here. I also want to thank The Richard. for The Richard, if you're not going over to the uh, Whining About Movies uh, Facebook page or the Rob Observations, the, the Post Geek Singularity Facebook page. The Richard's been killing it with these crazy... He's always got something... He's always playing something interesting. Yeah, really and, fun um, parties, viewing parties yeah. of movies. It's like endless. Endless. He does uh, music videos, all kinds of stuff. It's great. So check it out over there. Um, thanks to everybody. And uh, we will be back on Monday. I'll be back on Rob's Observations tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And we'll announce the movie tomorrow for Monday night. Moonrise Kingdom. Yeah, but that's not your favorite Wes Anderson. Doesn't matter. It's still a really good one. All right, okay, okay. Maybe. I don't know. Um, we'll talk about it. We'll think about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, this, this, this brings an end to Elizaveth's ep uh, whining about movies episode number thirty-one. Can you believe this show was born out of quarantine? We've it been doing was. this show only in quarantine. We've been doing three a week, 31, 31. 31 That's shows. Insane. So 31. we're into week eleven. Wow. Week eleven. That's... I mean, that's that's going on three months. 
Wow. It's gone so fast. It's gone so fast. We've I mean, seen some really good movies. We've seen some good movies. We've watched a, a, a wide array. Yes, we have. All right, well, why don't you take us out by saying what? Have a better night. Have a better night. <laughs> and thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks for being here. See you next time.